Hello, today we're going to talk about graph neural networks. Recall convolutional neural networks were specific neural networks that were designed to find structure and patterns within images. And they had particular types of operations like convolutions and pooling or subsampling that allowed convolutional networks to detect um, either classify images or detect sub-images within images etc. Now if we think about it, images are a certain kind of graph. They are a grid graph. Now can we extend some of those kinds of operations like convolution and things like that to working on more irregular graphs, ones that are defined by nodes and vertices and variable connectivity rather than this kind of grid-like connectivity. And in particular we would want to use some of the ideas of CNNs on these irregular graph structure. The first one was local receptive fields. Here the convolution operation uh, took this into account because you had these local regions of an image that you were looking at and then the convolution operation of the next node would be a slid over version of it. But unfortunately there's no clear notion of sliding or translation on a graph. But what a graph does have is neighborhoods. So one way that local receptive fields have been realized on graphs is by using um, neighbor, a vertex and its neighbors and performing an operation using the features of the neighbors. Now once you have these kinds of local receptive fields, then each neuron at the next layer will be looking at a small neighborhood of the previous layer. And so you have a reduction in parameter and shared weights. And then the next operation is pooling. Pooling is a form of summarization. And this can be achieved by graph coarsening or graph pooling, which is similar to the max or sum pooling in regions of an image. But again, it's dependent on neighbors in a graph. There are two kinds of constructions that have become popular for achieving these kinds of uh, features in a graph-based neural network. The first is a so-called spatial construction. Here we're very much looking at a graph spatially or in the spa vector space of a graph. You have operations that look at each vertex and its neighbors, aggregate them um, in the graph spatial domain. Um, and you have another set of neural networks that uses spectral construction. This is based in the graph spectral space. <coughs> Remember that you can take you can go to the Fourier domain of a graph by taking the graph Laplacian and taking its eigen decomposition, which are frequency harmonics. So in the spectral construction, you are looking at features as signals over a graph and using signal processing to come up with new features or ways of combining uh, features across different vertices. In the spatial setup, uh, typically you are looking at a particular vertex and a f some feature on the vertex, x. Uh, sub v for the vertex v and what you're going to do is you're going to aggregate that same feature from its neighbors um, and the same feature x look, when you're looking at the neighbors and you're going to combine these two together with some kind of an aggregation function f to compute a new feature h on this vertex and then you'd move to this vertex and do do the same thing except for this vertex only has these two neighbors and so on. One of the famous examples of this is the graph sage network. Um, here, um, this network operates by sampling neighborhoods uh, using some type of a k-hop neighbor search and aggregates feature information from these neighbors and then it uses these to uh, predict whatever label it's trying to predict uh, at the node level, but you can also predict labels at the entire graph level. What is the aggregation function? The aggregation function actually can be defined in various ways. Maybe the most common one is just mean aggregation, where you take the average or mean of the features of a node and its neighbors. You can also have max aggregation, where you look at the maximum value of a feature. But there's also more complicated kinds of aggregation suggested in the paper, such as LSTM aggregation, where you look at the neighbors in a particular order and accumulate the feature states in that way.
A more recent addition to these kinds of networks to make them more powerful is the addition of graph attention. Here, if you have different attention values for different of your neighbors, then you can get sort of a weighted average of the neighbors depending on the current state of this node. And so this is very much an analogy to the attention that's used in a transformer or a seek to seek type network that we've talked about. Now going to graph convolutional neural networks, these regard features on the vertices of a graph as graph signals. And it uses frequency domain graph filtering ideas to process these signals and come up with new features. Um, recall that sort of the original construction of filters of graphs are a way of rescaling the Fourier coefficients you get when you take the graph Fourier transform of the signal. Um, and so in this setup, what you have are um, the input graph, and then you look at all of the features, take their graph Fourier transform, and then you adjust the graph Fourier transform in some way using con graph convolutional operations here, followed by nonlinear activations. You put the features back. You can subsample or pool the graph. Uh, like you had pooling layers in convolutional neural networks. And then finally, you can have fully connected layers that you compare to output signals. So this is very much an analogy to the convolutional neural network that I showed in the beginning of this lecture. Um, some common practices for uh, the form of these filters is actually not to use the original formulation of filters where you're coming up with um, multipliers for the different Fourier coefficients, but rather uh, some type of a polynomial filter that actually avoids eigen decomposition. And one type is a Chebyshev filter. A Chebyshev polynomial is actually a polynomial of the entire graph Laplacian. And uh, you can see that you can create a basis of Chebyshev polynomials just by running this recurrence relation here. Um, and your filter would then just learn coefficients of these. And these filters have the advantage that they're uh, smooth in the frequency domain, which means they're localized in the vertex domain. And um, you do want a lot of local operations in your graph neural networks. So this is akin to having those localized operations that just aggregate neighbors in the graph neural network. Um, and this is how it's achieved in the graph convolutional network. So what are some types of applications? Actually, graph neural networks have ever-expanding sets of applications. Uh, one application could be um, to use the features that you get as a result of the node aggregations to do some type of a clustering. Um, and this is useful um, in social networks or other contexts. So this is like a network of you and who you know. You might know some people at Yale who have the same advisor and then there are high school friends and family members and uh, you can cluster these on the basis of predicted node features. And of course you can also predict links. This is a little bit like how Facebook says a new person should be your friend that's not already your friend. Um, so link prediction is another task that these uh, are trained to perform, as well as entire graph level classification. So you can take an entire protein molecule or some other type of small molecule and um, you can take the features of all of the nodes and can cut them together into one regression or classification decision on the entire graph. So you can have node level classifications, uh, node level clustering, as well as graph level properties that you can figure out with graph neural networks.